All right, we are slowly having everybody come in and join us. I've been hearing the doorbell ringing. Welcome, welcome. It is so great to see so many uh, familiar faces or at least names. Um, it is so great to see some brand new ones as well, which is always super, super exciting. Um, I am thrilled to have you joining us on this beautiful Monday morning, no matter where you are. I hope you are having an absolute phenomenal day and that by the end of today my goal for you is to help make you feel excited help make you feel motivated to get out there and start connecting with more clients because the reality is is there are still there are still there are still there are still clients that are ready and willing to buy right now and the biggest thing that we need to get do is actually connect with them trust me it might seem a lot harder than it actually is because right now people are craving personal attention they are craving connection from those that are around us one of the conversations i had uh, this weekend with a friend of mine was around what do you miss the most what over the last few weeks do you miss the most about work about your office environment and one of the women says you know what i just miss conversation i miss just connecting with people and hearing about their days i'm not having to stand around a water cooler anymore i'm not having to be able just to take somebody out for coffee and have a conversation and there's this realness that as we've moved ourselves away from away from this standard environment that we've allowed ourselves to be much more in zoom and for the first couple of weeks it was good it was novel it was like every meeting was was a zoom meeting and now what they're saying is that people are starting to feel this zoom fatigue what we call it because it's not natural for us to feel like we're constantly on that we're constantly watching our presence we're watching a screen we're watching what other people have to say and so what what is coming back again is the phone call we avoided it for so long because we're like oh our phone calls really relevant anymore is it necessary for us to get on the phone and my biggest thing is yes yes it is and it is more relevant today than it ever has been before because it's a different way of communicating we accepted a society about four or five years ago even longer than that the uh, email was going to be our primary method of communication and occasionally we would have video conferencing calls and that was really only necessary where you couldn't physically be available to somebody they were either in another city another province another uh, state whatever that looked like and so we would connect with them on a video call but what we're seeing then and so then the phone calls started to take off because now we had video calls for when it was necessary in-person call uh, meetings for when we wanted to and then email kind of took over where the phone call kind of filled in some of the gaps but now as we're not getting that face-to-face in-person conversation the phone call is having this massive resurgence the phone call is taking over because it is the perfect medium between I want to have a connection with you versus I need to actually have a proper business conversation there's so much relevance for the phone calls so I do have the chat open from just if you want to just put your name in the chat tell me like, where, where are you from say hi to everybody and also are you still making phone calls are you making more phone calls than you were before are you making less phone calls than you've made before are you making about the same number of phone calls as you would have let's say this was six or seven weeks ago is it the same number is it more is it less don't forget to tell me where you're from we're going to be going through this this is a um, a wonderful presentation because i love this one and uh and like i said the chat will be open from time to time so go ahead and uh, have your questions i will save time for the very end to be able to um, address any questions i will get through the material for those of you that have a hard stop i will be here right at the end of um will be finished right at the end including a little bit of time for q a and then if there's more conversations then i'm happy to talk to you welcome yes carl is making from wichita kansas uh you know rochelle she's making more phone calls carl's making all of them fantastic carl that is great news i love hearing that one of the things i say about phone calls as well especially right now 
is that a lot of people are avoiding the phone calls because they're saying, well, you know, I'm not really sure that right now is the best time to call. And I, you know, when I asked them, I said, why not? And they said, well, you know, if I, if I call them right now, you know, what if they're like, you know, not really wanting to talk? What if they're going through some really hard times? What if like, you know, all this thing. And I'm like, well, if your friend was going through a really hard time, would you say, well, you know, I know my friend is going through a really hard time, so I'm just going to avoid them for now. No, we would never say that. Um, Harris is making the same number of calls. It's still not enough. Okay, I hope we're going to encourage you to make even more phone calls. So today we're going to be focusing on the five-minute phone call that leads to $100,000 in sales. Now, I want to be very clear here, okay? I am not going to promote that every single phone call is going to lead to $100,000 in sales, nor am I going to tell you that you're going to be able to make a phone call and today you're going to get hundred thousand dollars in sales that is not the intention of this at all what I am a big proponent of is that we have to start our relationships from somewhere and so if today you made a phone call that ended up leading to another meeting and another meeting and then you eventually got to the one hundred thousand dollars maybe by the end of the month because that has happened and I'll speak to you from personal experience. This has happened to me personally while I was a um, while I've been a business owner. And then I encourage you. This has also happened to a lot of our students that go through our programs as well. Because what you will get is you're going to get laser focus. You're going to get clear on the message, and we're going to deliver this. Alyssa is um, phoning about the same, right? But she's you know uh, facilitating with clients and cares. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful news. Okay. So let's, let's understand where do I, where am I coming from? So I have been in sales for a really long time. Um, I started my career in Xerox back in 2006 after I had graduated with a bachelor of commerce and a degree in finance. I'm a big numbers person. I love quantifiables. I'm super analytical. I even lean a little bit more onto the introversion side. Surprise, surprise. For those of you that believe that uh, sales is an extroverted type of conversation, I'm here to actually deep bunk that um, with, with uh, you know, massive security in this because I lean more on the introversion side. If I can do it, you can too. And I remember the first time that I really had to suffer in sales, which was in the great recession of 2008 and 2009, when everybody, all of a sudden, everything started happening really quick. We saw all of the, the, the inklings in the stock market. There was all this conversation. And then all of a sudden, in October of 2008, and eight, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, Mac went bankrupt. And we were like, oh my goodness, this is like, this is the end of the world. And, and almost overnight, every single client grabbed every dollar that they had. And they said, we are not parting with these dollars. Forget it. We're not having this conversation. And yet, despite that, despite that hard economic time where everyone was shrinking back, I was still able to become rep of the year because I was able to focus my clients on helping them make more money. This became a client-centric conversation. We're going to turn your phone calls into that same conversation, and you are going to find those clients that are ready to buy. In 2015, I was hard hit again because oil prices were at their lowest, um, at the lowest at that time today. I mean, um, two weeks ago, I think they were like trading at negative dollars. They were paying people to take over their oil. But at that time, that was horrific. And where I was working, the companies that I was working for were a lot of oil and gas services, oil and gas manufacturers, oil and gas like type of thing. It was basically the engine that kept, kept where I currently live running. And this was difficult because a lot of companies said, we're not spending any money. Like our revenue's not coming in. We're not going to do it. Yet then again, I became the top rep because what I did was I worked with my clients on creating more, more personal solutions. And besides that, even despite these global impacts or these, um, these commodity impacts, I had also had to deal with clients that had gone through bankruptcies, right? They would have a, uh, in one situation, I had a founder that ended up dying and there was a, a massive ripple in the entire community. Um, companies that had to deal with mass layoffs for various reasons. And they're like, we're not spending anything. We just had to let go of our people. Yet we were able to get through those conversations and ultimately help them build their business, helping us by helping them. Increasing our revenue, increasing their revenue. It became a win, win, win for everybody. Let's talk more about how we're going to be able to do that. 
So after I had left my corporate sales job, for those of you that have heard my story, you might have heard this before. But in 2014, I decided that I had been done. I was done with corporate sales. I, I wasn't feeling the passion for it I had felt before. I wasn't feeling excited for it. I wasn't waking up every morning thinking, oh my goodness, I am so happy to save some massive company 0.01% of their bottom line. It wasn't doing it for me. So I actually, I, I had done really well in corporate sales. I had made um, very good money and I decided, you know what? I'm going to go travel the world. And I went ahead and I, for six months, I traveled 17 countries across four different continents. It was an unbelievable experience. And when I came home, I said, that is actually the life I want to live. I want to be able to pick up and go. I want more freedom. I want to have my future children be able to go on two week, three week international vacations. And if we choose to live somewhere for a month, that is what the life I want to have. I want to have more freedom. And I did a ton of research and I found out, number one, the only way I was going to be able to do this is I had to start my own business. There was almost no company in the world that would allow me to have that level of freedom that I desire. So I had to start my own business. But the other thing I ended up finding was a lot of these nomadic entrepreneurs, the ones that promote themselves living on the beach and building these six digit, seven digit companies while only having to work four hours a week. And I'm like, oh, that is the dream I want. That is what I want. And I like, this will be me. I will be living on some international paradise beach location. I will have my laptop. I will blog for four hours and life will be perfect because I know whatever I have to sell, I could sell it to anybody in the world. I don't even need a ton of clients. I need seven. I need 10. I need 20 clients. If I had 20 clients, I would be able to develop myself a six digit, seven digit company and life would be perfect. Or so I thought, because when I actually started my business, it felt like I was constantly grinding. It was a grueling process. I was blogging. I was posting on social media. I was going to networking events for the sake of going to networking events. I felt like I was just constantly exhausted. And maybe some of you are feeling like this right now in lack of actually having the life that we had dreamt that we were going to have. We're actually living this life where we're suffering from insomnia. We don't know where the next conversation or paycheck or dollar is going to come through. We don't know when the next client is going to be able to buy. We have maybe a few deals that are sitting in a pipeline, but we can't even put a date to them right now because nobody knows. And it feels like we're just throwing our hands in the air and in this set, set situation of hurry up and wait. Hopefully something will happen. Hopefully the next thing will happen. And what I ended up finding was that I was just driving myself to a slow death because if I didn't change what I was doing, if I kept doing what I was constantly doing, I would never make it. And one day I ended up having this conversation with myself and I said, Kim, what is going on? You went from top rep working for American Express, for Xerox, for these Fortune 500 companies, and now you can't even make a company work when you need to make just as much money as you were making in a salary working for another company. You were selling 10 times, 20 times, 100 times more with those companies than you are working for yourself. I was excited to get a $500 deal. And I'm thinking, where has my priority shifted? Where have I changed my conversation that right now I'm working myself to death? And then I came across this quote, the person who chases two rabbits catches neither one. Huh. That's what I was doing. 
I was running at all these conversations. I wasn't clear in who I wanted to meet with. I wasn't clear on what I wanted to have a conversation with. And I was constantly changing the, where I was being able to go. I was felt like I was living a squirrel with a shiny nut syndrome where I was going, oh, okay, well, somebody's showing me attention over there. So I'm going to go refocus over here or, oh, you know what? The economy is looking for something completely different. Let's go over here. And maybe some of us have felt this, the biggest thing that when the, at the end of the year, when they talk about the top words that are going to come out of 2020, pivot is going to be one of them. You need to pivot your business. Now, I am not promoting in the event that you absolutely had to, that pivoting on your business isn't the right thing. It might be the right thing for the time being. But don't pivot so much that you're trying to constantly chase what you had already building in order to change what's going on over here. Don't pivot so much that you're saying, I know I typically service these types of clients, but for now, I'm going to also try to focus on these other clients. And we're running at a new base of clients when we should be just focusing on what we need to focus on. We end up trying to run at all the rabbits that are running around trying to catch something thing as opposed to trying to catch nothing. Now, if this resonated with you, if this analogy resonated with you, I want you to just put in the chat and be like, oh my goodness, you are speaking my language right now. I feel like I am chasing rabbits and I'm ultimately not catching either one. And you will know that this is you because when you look at the last seven weeks of revenue, have you either stayed the same or grown your business, right? you are focused on what you need to focus on. If you feel like your business has completely shrunk, has completely pulled back, right? You're not even sure, you have no idea where everything is coming through, right? This is ultimately where we want to get to. Yeah, and don't worry, thank you, Gregory. Yes, rabbits, rabbits, right? So who are we today? Who's K Advantage Group? So this is my company. We are a Fortune 500 level sales training for B2B consultants, right? If your business is selling something invisible, yes, you might have a product tied into it, but it is not about the product, right? We will work with things, uh, companies like IT firms where they're setting up whole networking. Yes, I could talk to you about fiber optics, but it's not about the fiber optics cable. It is about the service capabilities that are behind this. It is about the HR recruitment services, the outsourcing capabilities. It is about the technology that you are ultimately creating, right? We're selling something invisible. So why are companies making massive money right now? And yet here I am feeling like I am chasing the pennies. I am willing, happy to deal, just get crumbs. Yay, I finally get a crumb. No, no more of this. Because what you are ultimately going to get is you are going to get more sleep, more sleep from knowing where the deals are going to come from. Oh, how good would that be? Today is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And we are going to run with that 4th, right? To run with the force, the 4th. We are going to run with it. Because by the end of today, I want you to finally go to sleep at night tonight and say like, oh, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to know today what I'm going to close at the end of May, at the end of June, before the end of summer. I actually just finished doing my own personal 120 day plan and we created a massive agenda. I'm actually meeting with my team at noon and it is being rolled out. And I said, number one, we might have other companies that might outsell us. That is fine but I promise no one is going to outwork us because we know where we're going to go have these conversations and we know who we're going to target. And when those conversations are started, we know what is going to happen, when it's going to close and for how much money and how we're actually going to transact it before the contract is signed. Because the other thing it gives you is more empowerment, more empowerment to say no to the people that are going to waste your time. More empowerment to say no to the people that are going to grind you because a, there's on top of everything else going on, a lot of people are going to try to take advantage of you. They're going to say, well, we could always go somewhere else. And out of fear, we're gonna say, okay, okay, I will do whatever it takes. I'm happy to have a dollar better than no dollar. But then it turns out that there is such a thing that some dollars are actually worse than having no dollars. 
And so by having the proper sales process, you know exactly what to do and how to say it. This is me today. That is me on the left. My husband jokes. He's like, I am going to replace every single one of our wedding photos with the photo of you and Oprah. He's like, because you have a bigger smile on that picture than you do on our wedding day. Now, granted, I also had a relationship with Oprah when I was no taller than a grasshopper's knee. But yes, this is me today. I am also LinkedIn's most influential sales leader to follow, Success Magazine's most inspirational blogger. That is my third book sell more faster. If you have not downloaded it, um, please let me know. I will get you a free downloaded copy of the entire thing for free. I am also Startup Canada's Female Entrepreneur of the Year. So the first thing that you might, um, you might realize when you're going through there is like, Kim, okay, let's get to this. There is absolutely no way. There is no way that we can make a phone call that is going to lead to more business. Now, I want to be very clear, and I said this at the very beginning, I am not promoting and I am not promising you that a phone call that you make today is automatically going to lead to $100,000 sales. What it is going to lead to is to a relationship that is going to lead to another call, another meeting, another conversation that may eventually lead to $100,000 if you have a $100,000 service offering. If you don't have a $100,000 service offering, think about what your top, your absolute top service offering is. Is it 5,000? Is it 10,000? Is it 50,000? Maybe it's more than 100,000. But whatever it is, it can easily happen today. But what we need to do first of all, right, is instead of chasing all those rabbits that I said, we're going to have to filter in, get really narrow focus. And I know for some of you, <gasps> the palpitations are starting. The anxiety is starting. Kim, I cannot limit the number of people I'm talking to right now. If I limit the number of people I'm talking to right now, how do I know I'm going to be, and I'm going to end up filtering out the right conversations? Because remember, if the moment you end up taking your eyes away from the rabbit you are trying to chase and look at the other rabbit that is running away, you are not going to catch either one. We're going to get you really specific and really focused. And ultimately, it's going to help you get clearer and more tailored in your, in your message. The second thing you're going to do, and this, this rings true whether it's today or whether this was six months ago or six years ago, is that we are going to build empathy with that conversation before logic. Logically, no one wants to buy right now. Logically, everyone needs to save money, okay? And if we end up trying to appeal to that logic, you will lose. Because unless your product or service ends up paying somebody or costs you zero, literally zero, Logically, it doesn't make sense for me to invest with you. But emotionally, I know I need to. Emotionally, I know that if I don't invest right now, if I don't spend, I could potentially die. I could potentially lose my business. I could potentially go bankrupt. The fear is real regardless. But on the flip side, if I do invest, if that dollar I spend with you ends up turning into $4, $10, $100, that was a worthwhile investment. There are more millionaires created during times of recession than there are during times of boom. And the reason being is because people like you, business owners like you, who are sitting there and thinking, how am I going to make this work? are finding the opportunity, creating deeper relationships and helping their clients understand how this is going to help them build the business. And then finally, this is gonna seem counterintuitive, but we're going to invite the right to work with us as opposed to giving everything away. Think of this like the bad boy that everyone told you to stay away from in high school. For the ladies that are out there, for the guys that are out there, right? Whoever that, that bad one was, right? We always found ourselves attracted to the bad one, right? The one that everyone wanted and nobody actually got, right? The one that you like, you worked so hard to get their attention, right? Now, I don't want you to be so exclusive that you're like, oh, you know, I'm not going to do this for you. But rather, when you create a certain caliber, a barrier to entry, 
ultimately what it does is it makes people want to chase you. It makes people want to be a part of that exclusive company. It makes them want to work with you. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this. So in the first part, we're going to talk about where I want you to, to have a conversation about selectively choosing your clients and engaging only with those that are showing excitement. <gasps> okay, uh, I know, I know. I'm gonna say some really controversial things on today's call, you guys, but I want you to stick with me. Because when, number one, you have to selectively choose. Now, this is oftentimes called the buyer persona. It's sometimes called the customer avatar. Um, what this essentially is, is understanding the entire demographic of who your ideal client is. In our company, we work with two different types of companies. We work with business owners like yourself, and typically they've been in business for less than two years. They are B2B service-based companies. They are selling something invisible for a premium price, right? Or at least that's their goal. I don't want to just be another, I can also do this. I would rather be, this is where we ultimately said, I want to be the one that everyone says, we had to pay a little bit more, but man, it was worth it. I want that for you. And those are the people that we typically work with. They might not be there yet, but that's their eyes on the prize. That is their goal. They are determined to get there and we show them how to get there very quickly. The other ones we work with are teams, teams of companies that ultimately are setting themselves up for that same level of success. They have been growing their business. They have a sales team and it might not be a 10 person sales team, but it might be four or five. And with some marketing people, with some client delivery, because I believe, I truly believe that sales is an everyone game. Your entire organization has to be focused on revenue generation from the top down, from the CEO, the president, all the way down. We all have to be focused on revenue generation. So when you focus on who you want to service, right, whatever that is, and so in our case, yes, we go after two, but I want to be very clear. I, I focus on one. I have a teammate that focuses on another one. Neither of us are chasing all of them. We had to focus. But when I was first starting, I focused only on the entrepreneurs, the single business owners, the solopreneurs. And as we continue to grow and expand, I, as the leader, had to push the envelope upwards and allow the other company, the other people on my team to say, this already works. We already have a solution and a program that works. Just fo follow the map follow the steps. And this is when we see our students, our graduates start to grow in the same way. They focus on their smaller people. And then as they grow, they, they hire someone to focus on the smaller people so they can focus on the bigger conversations, not more of the same, but constantly pushing the envelope. Now, I only engage with those that show a certain level of excitement. If you sell to somebody who wants your services or someone who needs your services, Always focus on the person who wants your services. You will talk until you are blue on the face to the person who needs your services, but will never take action. I know I need it. I know this is something that we need to implement in our company. I just not, I'm just not sure if right now is the right time. I'm just not sure that like, you know, this is it. You will try to spend all your time convincing someone why right now is the right time versus just turning that into a question. Well, why would it be the right time? Why, what would happen if you choose to wait? Now, if they can't get excited with those two questions, why would now be the right time? What will happen if you choose to wait? If they can't get excited from those two questions, you walk away. Your time is too valuable and too precious right now. You can always come back to them later on, but time is of the essence because there are people that are going to get themselves emotionally charged. They are going to get excited. Now, excitement can be exciting, like exuberance. Excited can be also that anxiety. I need to change. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. 
but you need to be in control. You are in control. We cannot sit back and hurry up and wait for pandemic to pass. We cannot sit back and hurry up and wait for everything to come back to quote unquote normal. And I'm putting this in air quotes because no one knows what new normal is going to look like. When 9-11 happened, it changed airline transportation forever. At the end of this, there is going to be so many changes and we don't know what that's going to look like. If you want my prediction, part of it is going to be you're going to see more companies that are going to allow their people to work from home, even on a partial basis. I think we're getting used to this and this is going to happen. The other big change that's going to happen is that it's going to open up borders for how we do business. We're going to be able to work with different cities and different states very easily. The reason being is because creating webinars and these types of video communications, it didn't matter if someone was down the street street or two states over. The conversation is exactly the same and now we're being accustomed to dealing with people the same way. But if you're, it's important to you, you need to take charge in order to create this. So for those of you that haven't done it or you're in the process of doing it, today is the day. May the 4th be with you to create your targeted list of 100. Get yourself laser focused. What is the rabbit that you want to change? Singular rabbit. What is the rabbit you want to change? Who are those individuals? Who are those companies that you are determined to work with? Because with 100, it doesn't matter. Economics don't matter. Conversations don't matter. Out of 100, you will at least get 10% to say yes. And if you can't get 10%, I'm sure you can get 5% to say yes. And if you are less than 5%, I highly encourage you to take a look at your business model. Because if you can't get 10% or even 5% of people to say yes, you're either not targeting the right conversations or you're not targeting the right, um, the right business, right? It might be a product market fit, in which case then you need to either change the product or change the market. But get clear, who are those companies? Who are you going to target? And literally spend the next hour, two hours, writing them down, finding them on LinkedIn, doing your social research. Who are the top growth companies in, in Wichita, Kansas, right? Who are the other companies we want to work for? Whatever that is. And what is your strategy to help them keep their excitement high? Because how would you approach a prospect differently? if they were to buy $20,000 versus 2,000, would you approach them differently? Would you, would you know the first time you called somebody, despite what the company was, if they were going to buy 2,000 or $20,000, if those were your two offerings, let's say you had your extreme high end was 20,000 and most of your offerings was at 2,000. The reality is it probably is not different. You will still have to connect with them you'll still have to have a conversation with them. And through the, the evolution of getting to know them, of the next meeting and the meeting after that, will you know greater where they actually land? I've had conversations with huge, massive companies only at the very end for them to buy meh, very, very little of what I have to serve. Whereas I've had conversations with small companies, ones I would have never even considered, and they buy a massive amount of my service offering. They buy like in the tens of thousands of service offering because they get it. So it doesn't matter where it falls, you're going to approach them in the exact same way, but understand where that is. And you're gonna create a compelling action. So one of the things that we will do is we go through, what is that elevator pitch? And I want to be very clear, your elevator pitch is not this like lengthy statement. It is not this, oh, here's everything that I do. I, I do service training for service training companies and oh my goodness, I'm amazing. And here's all the companies I've worked for in the past and I could probably help you. Ugh. Nobody cares about that. The moment your elevator pitch starts with, I do this, my company is, you have the wrong elevator pitch because it does not tell me what you're going to do for me. There's a saying in, in sales called with them, what's in it for me. I want to hear what you do for me, right? 
you know, it could be companies like you have seen results like this. What would it mean to have better employee morale in your conversations? What would it mean to be able to know that you are more secure in your, your data that's being transferred when your employees are working from home? I love question elevator statements because it gives me the chance to actually give you a response back versus here's a bunch of information. Now tell me what you're going to do with that information. Oh, that doesn't work for me. I want to have a conversation. Now, what it should do as well, though, is it should invite me to take a next step. I only need someone to go from a zero to a one or a two in excitement, maybe a four, when I give them a call the very first time. I don't need them to go from a zero to a 10. And if you need help with actually making that phone call or getting that excitement, every second week we are doing open role plays on these phone calls. You can join us every second Monday. So not this Monday, but the same time next Monday, you can join us for this free meetup. We will put you in a Zoom room. You will be put in a room of three or four different people and you will practice making these phone calls. Practice, practice, practice. Sales is a skill. And the more you practice, the better you get at it. And it is nice to hear the feedback. And it is nice to have someone say, actually, that was really good. Because in the time you, were, you felt like you were sweating bullets. And the other person who's pretending to be the caller is like, no, I really enjoyed that. I actually felt like you were really natural. And you're like, oh my goodness, I'm actually a lot better than I am. So let me know at the end of this, if you want to make sure that you get an invite to that. If you are on our email subscriber list, you will get a message as well. But action leads to fast results, okay? So if you're gonna do this, so there's a couple of things that I wanna look at is number one, your actual website or your contact us page or some type of compelling. If you're still putting out content, if you're still taking some type of action, make sure you, it is very clear what the action is that you want someone to take. On a phone call, the only action I want you to take is to agree to a meeting. Very specific. Are, I'm glad you're interested. Are you free Tuesday at 9 a.m. to just have a conversation about this further? Yeah, I am. Okay, great. Specific action, right? If I'm sending you a direct message through LinkedIn, I am sending you an email, I want, you, I want it all to, so to be the same. Do you have time at Tuesday at nine o'clock to have a better conversation on this? Very specific. You want it easy for someone to just say yes. Not, oh, that sounds good, when were you thinking? And then we're going back and forth in emails. Forget that. If you're doing this in content, what you want to do is like, this is what I want you to do. I want you to register. I want you to book my meeting link. I want you to do this exact action. And you have to be, you have to tell people, I want you to book me in my calendar. Boom. Just like that. Be very clear what you want people to do on your contact us page. This is also very clear. I want you to call Karen at this phone number. I want you to contact us with your sales questions. I want you to contact us and tell us who you're currently using for your vendor, right? Very specific, very clear. Not just have more questions, question mark, right? That doesn't tell me what I want to do. And if people respond to you, whether that's a contact us page, a LinkedIn request, an email, or you know, hopefully you're already on the phone and you're already converting this. But if you're using something other than phone for this intermediary step, you have five minutes, five minutes to contact someone back and they are more likely to co convert into a sale. Every five minute increment that you wait, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, you are less and less likely to get that sale up until 24 hours. And by the time you get to 24 hours, you have a zero, almost a 0% chance of ever getting that deal. So do not wait for that conversation. The moment they get to you, get right back. The moment they get to you, get right back. Right. Great. I'm sending you a meeting invite right now. Great. I'm going to, I'm going to put this in your calendar for Tuesday at nine o'clock. Let me know if that doesn't work for you. 
get it in the calendar, get it in the calendar, get it in the calendar. You cannot move sales cycles forward by just hoping that someone's going to get back to you. This sounds great. I, I hope that this will ultimately lead to something else. And when you do follow up, feel free to selectively follow up. Now for the time and purpose today, it might be that you're just following up with everyone. But the intention out of this is to help get you busier and busier and busier. If your calendar is blank right now, your only job is to get meetings in the calendar. Meetings, meetings, meetings. It doesn't matter who the meetings are with, you just get the meetings in the calendar. And over time, as your calendar starts to fill up, you're going to be able to become more selective with following up with people. Feel free to become more, more targeted on who you want to follow up with, right? Do they have a certain amount of revenue? Do they have a certain number of employees? Are they, do they have a certain number of locations? But as you start to build your, your busyness, and the other thing to do is um, one of the things I did as I was building my business was I actually had a fake EA um, who would actually help to filter out some of the requests that I was getting. Because I got to a point where I was getting too many requests. My calendar was filling up, but a lot of the meetings didn't feel meaningful enough. They didn't feel like they were um, ultimately going to help me get to the, where I wanted to. So when people would contact me or say, like, especially if I wasn't going out to them, if I'm going out to them and they're coming back, absolutely. But if people were coming to me and saying, I'd love to meet with you. I'd love to pick your brain. We're starting to see more of this, right? I'd love to talk to you about how you can make more revenue. Great, right? Why don't you contact Jenny at, you know, and I went on my Gmail and I actually created Jen at Gmail. Now, granted in the back scenes, everything was being forwarded on to me anyway. But putting in this fake barrier to entry or this fake executive assistant until I got to the point where I actually now have a team. But in the meantime, that was enough to filter people out. The moment they thought that I, was, I could afford not only my own salary, but someone else's, that was enough for them to change. So are you, when, you do, do, when you do that, right? When people will start to meet with you, you start to get them booked in your calendar, make sure you're doing your research. Time is the one thing that none of us have more of. Make it effective. Are you prepared? Are they prepared? How are you preparing them? What have you done your research on? What do you know about them? What do you want to find out about them? Oops, are we? Oh yeah, okay, there we go, sorry. Flipping, flipping, flipping. I, it, for a second, it looked like there was a, another slide in there. Okay, now we're gonna get on the phone. We have done the work that we've not needed to do. We're going to get on the phone. And the, the funny thing is, is this is going to be the difference in hostage negotiations versus phone sales. So hostage negotiations, um, really interesting. They actually spend more time building rapport and empathy than they do actually telling you everything they do. They, they are really good active listeners. Like they listen for things that you would, you would be astounded to. I was very fortunate. I was on a webinar last week and um, there was also a gentleman out in, um, oh geez, where is he? Um, he was somewhere in Oh my goodness. I want to say like Milwaukee or something. Um, but he's a hostage negotiator. And I was like, I mean, I was beside myself. I'm like, Oh my goodness. I just want to pick your brain for hours and hours and hours because there's so many things And maybe sometimes you actually feel like some of your sales cycles are hostage negotiations, but there's actually a lot of things that hostage negotiators and amazing salespeople have in common. We need to be listening. We need to empathize. We need to help tap into emotions. We need to be thinking about what are the fears? What are the goals? What are the ambitions? What are the things that are like stopping us internally from moving forward? This isn't about logic, but we do need to get people to a point where they're like, I cannot do this anymore, right? I know I haven't been investing any money right now, but if we don't invest something, there is going to be nothing left to invest. I was on a sales conversation uh, this morning with a, with a client of ours or soon to be client of ours. And we're having this conversation. We're in the midst of building this. And what he says is, Kim, we need to do something. If we don't train our sales team, if we don't take action, if we don't learn how to actually make more conversations, turn those conversations into meaningful meetings that ultimately converted to sales, there is going to be no more company for us to later on train down the road. 
He's like, we have to do it right now. And right now is the time that we're going to do it because there has never been a better time. We have the time to focus. We have the time to try and practice and actually go out to new conversations. And I said, Dave, you're right. You're absolutely right. So hostage negotiators get this really good because they listen and they listen for that point where it's like, I need to change. And if I don't change right now, this is what it's ultimately going to be. It's not that I'm going to hold on my money, hoping that by holding on my money, I'm going to be better off in the future. No, nobody holds onto their money thinking that they're going to be better off. They hold onto their money, hoping that when the time comes for a really valuable investment to come up, then I have it available to invest so that I can help grow. I can help deliver more, right? It is up to you as salespeople, as business owners, as leaders in your organization to help compel your, your, employ, your clients to get to that point where I need to change something. And the way we focus this on is the destination versus the transportation. So for those of you that have watched me before, for those of you that have read my book, you, you know this. Right now where we are, it sucks. Okay, I'm going to be very clear. It sucks. People aren't spending money. People are afraid of losing business. People are afraid of going bankrupt. We are we're in a fear place. And yes, there might be light at the end of the tunnel for some of us, but for many others, we're still in this hurry up and wait. I'm sitting at the airport and I don't know where I'm going to go, right? I don't know what the next place is. So where we focus our clients on is not where you are and how much it sucks. That's important to this conversation. But where do you want to be? Where do you want to be 90 days or 120 days in the future? Where do you want to be two years in the future? Get them focusing on that. At the end of that, that's a beautiful beach. It's Cancun. Oh, who doesn't want to be like in Cancun right now? I know Cancun and like the middle of May is not people's ideal vacation. But in all honesty, I will get on a plane to go anywhere right now. I want to go anywhere right now. And so we focus them on that ultimate destination. And then we bring them back and we say, okay, if that's where you want to be in 120 days, what do you need to do today and next and next? And, and all of a sudden they get to a point where they're like, oh, that means I actually have to take action today. That means I actually have to do something today in order to know, to know that if that's where I want to be and that's what I'm going to feel, I'm going to feel so good to be there, then I need to do something today as we start to move them back. To the point where they're like, okay, now I get it. One of the best things I did in personally was on Thursday, we did 120 day strategic planning. And we said, this is where we want to be. And these are the targets that we want to go through. And do you think I feel more empowered and more excited to do this? And now I'm going to drip this out to my team. And we're going to say, okay, now here's the conversations we need to have. Here's the people that we're going to target. Here's the convert. Here's the who what we're going to say and how we're going to book more meetings, book more meetings, book more meetings, book more meetings. Because emotions matter. If we end up trying to sell rationally, right, it does not actually work. Rationally, no one should be wanting to spend money right now. Rationally, there is no money to spend. There is no extra money to spend. Rationally, things are tough, and so I don't want to touch it. Whereas emotionally, there's a lot going on. And when you start to have these conversations with your clients, whether this is on the phone, Ideally, if you're not going to be talking to them through direct messaging or email or something, get them on the phone. And then from that phone, we get them to the meeting. But throughout that entire thing, as you go from your phone to your meeting, right? Every time you hear them, you want to call up that, that emotion. It sounds like you're really frustrated right now. It, it sounds like you're really scared. It sounds like you're really worried. It sounds like that excites you. It sounds like you're really optimistic about the future. And by calling out those emotions, people feel them. Like, yeah, I do. And we allow the space for that emotion to settle because that's where the decisions are actually happening. They're happening here. Malcolm Gladwell talked all about this in his book, Blink. He said people make decisions and then they spend months justifying that decision. 
Harvard Business Review did a study where they said we're like, you know, when they asked people what decision they made, and then they ended up asking them later on to justify the decision, what they found out was that the decision was made before the information was actually delivered. The moment I felt really good about this relationship, the more every time I met with that person, I convinced myself that this is a good relationship, that this is a person that is going to help me build my business. Mitzi and, you know, Harris and Deborah and James and, you know, Michael and Tracy, you're all people who are going to help me grow my business. And I feel good about that because every time I meet with you, I feel like the world actually is focused on something greater. I feel like whatever's going on right now doesn't matter because you help me to focus on the future again. And that's where I feel optimistic and excited. So you're going to qualify your prospects and qualify them again. This is how we move those sales cycles really fast. I, as you move through this, you're not going to feel like you're going to meet with people for meeting sake anymore. You're going to meet with people with intention. We go from the phone call to the meeting, from the meeting to the qualification. And we qualify the person on various factors such as buzz, budget, authority, need, and timeline. And to be very clear, I'm not going to ask you what your budget is because the response I'm going to get from you is zero. I have no money. There is no money to spend. And that doesn't matter who it is. Nobody, Google doesn't have any money to spend right now. Amazon doesn't have any money to spend right now, right? Nobody has any money to spend right now. So, but it's not about where you are at this point in time. It's where you are in the future. And when we talk about the investment, we will eventually get to a point on what is that return on that investment. And it is never up for you to tell your clients what that return on investment is. It's up for you to ask. And then finally, we will invite the right. Your business is for exclusivity. It is members only. And we only allow the best of the best. If you are going to sell yourself at a premium dollar amount, if you are going to sell for the most amount of money, what I want to see from you is that you say, okay, we're only going to sell to those who are going to be able to appreciate what we have. We are looking for lifetime relationships, not fly by the night, seat of their pants, people that are like, ah, I need to do something to change right now. There's too many people out there in the world. I want people that are specific, that are committed, and that are going to be willing to do whatever it takes to ensure that we get you to that journey, to that destination that you ultimately want. So we're going to anchor expectations before we get to the close. We're going to let people know that number one, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not going to be easy, nor will you see results in the first two weeks. Okay. And if those are your expectations, I'm setting your expectations today that that is not going to happen because the people that work with me know that they're not going to see results for 30, 60, 90 days, whatever your time frame is, maybe it's longer than that. You're also going to set their expectations for what is the appropriate cost. Listen, and we, what we do is actually we, we set it from higher to lower versus the other way around because we're invoking emotion in the conversation. Nobody gets excited by hearing the lowest starting price. Your car is starting at $10,000 and it goes up from there. And you're like, oh my goodness, $10,000 is so amazing. But what could you sell me for even more money? Like, I'm so excited. Nobody ever says that. So you set expectations with the highest time frame, and then we work down. Listen, our clients see results in as long as 90 days, and most of them will see them as quick as 30. All right, but I want you to be clear that this is going to be a minimum of a three month agreement. This is a three month relationship, right? Most of our clients will invest as much as $50,000, but individually they'll pay 5,000, you know, 10,000, whatever that number is, set them up for a high and bring them down. Because when they hear the high number, they hear the high time frame, <gasps> they get panic. Oh, that's really long. Oh, that's really expensive. Okay, but it could be as low as this. 
It could be as short as this. Okay, that makes me feel more comfortable. And people will only hear what they hear first. This isn't about just getting the deal. This is about creating relationships for life. And people want what they can't have. They want to know that people, that they can drive to take action. We will only deal with people that are able to take action today. I am not here to go ahead and just help and help and help. At some point, you need to take the next step with me. At some point, you need to commit to this relationship. And so it's okay if the next step is not, the action is not the, the contract, but there should be a next step of a next meeting. There should be a next step of something else. And if the person isn't willing to commit to the next meeting, what are they going to commit to? What are they going to agree to? We need action to be taken. Action, 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 action. Because all of a sudden people realize that they're on a wave with you and it is hard to get off that wave. So we want to be able to take there. And remember, when you move yourself through, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Oh, these are relationships. The difference between the people that are just going to survive and those that are going to thrive are the ones that are in survival mode, are looking for the quick transactions. They're looking for the this right now, right? Mr. Right now. I'm looking for, they don't have to be, uh, they don't have to be Mr. Right. They just have to be Mr. Right now. Like that's all I'm looking for. And that's great. And you're going to have your fun and you might enjoy it for a little while, but it's never going to get you further ahead. Whereas when you look for the person, the clients, the companies that are not only going to be there with you today, but when the next storm happens and the next storm happens, they are there with you for life. You were there for them for life and they were there for your life. These are the companies that grow. Those are the ones that we look at and we're like, oh, that is the company I want to be. When I grew, started my company, I wanted to be the, the catalyst. I wanted to be the one that everyone looked at and said, that is the ideal company. And treat every interaction as if something amazing is going to happen next. Because it is. Now, I told you how I went traveling around the world for six months. And one of the, out of all the things that I learned, because there were so many, one of the things I really walked away with was this African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. You can work really hard and you might be moving really fast and you could be running after rabbits, rabbit, 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 rabbit. But if you want to actually achieve success, if you want to grow your business, if you want to thrive, you have to find those relationships that are going to help you get there. Who has already done this? How do you learn from them? How do you help yourself grow and expand? So I have a free sales strategy for those of you that are wanting to take action today. I need to learn how to apply this to my business. There is only five of them available. Dale is going to be the one who's going to help you. And he only has a limited number of spots available. You can text him, text him, text him right now. 403-390-9793. Say, tell him what your name is and that you just finished watching our webinar and say, I want one of the five spots, right? Put me in for one of your five spots that you have left. Because that is going to be the difference. If nothing else, that is what you're going to get. Now, people have just taken us up on just that offer, right? Nothing else beyond that, right? One woman said that she ended up securing a meeting with a, an international hotel group, Fairmont Hotels, right? She's like, oh my goodness. Like after the advice I got from this, this is what we ended up getting from there. 
another woman ended up saying, she's like, after our conversation, we ended up creating great sales tips and great sales strategies, business goals. And every tip that she received was specific to client niches and her pipeline niches and her pipeline. She was able to really grasp what she was trying to do. Dale is as much of a lifetime entrepreneur as he is as a part of our team. He brings way more experience as I do. Because one thing I know for sure, always hire people smarter than yourself. Dale is one of those people. And he has far more experience than I do. And finally, he's like, I encourage you no matter what to follow up, listen, and read. If you're interested in making yourself better professionally as well as personally. Now, I just got a message from Dale saying that he, he only has one spot left. So if you're in the middle of your text, make sure that you're texting back right away. But if you aren't gonna go all the way, why go at all? If you're not gonna go ahead and build whatever you're trying to build, right? Choose today to look for the other rabbit. Choose today to go after something else. But if you're focused and you're willing to build it, do what you need to. Awesome. I saved time for a few more questions here. So if you have questions in the chat, go ahead. Yes, Gregory calls it labeling. Yes, that's like Chris Voss. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, what about leads that come in after hours and weekends? Mitzi, great call conversation. Um, so what you want to do is you want to have some type of auto reply that goes out right away saying, we will get back to you within four business hours. We will get back to you, but you want, people want to have a certain level of expectation set. And so whatever you said, if you say four business hours, put that as the extreme because you know you're gonna get back to them in two. Now, if four is typically where you get to back to people, let them know that you're gonna get back to them within 24 hours. So at least they're expecting, they know that you've received it. Um, the penalty close does not work. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't, right? You know, listen, you got to do this right now. Otherwise, you know, here, you're, you're absolutely right. We don't want people to feel, now creating scarcity does work, right? And creating a certain level of like, there is only a limited number. Yeah, absolutely. As long as it's true. Now, where I don't want you to do is say, we only have room for four and you actually don't have room for four, like, you know, or you like have room for like 20 or something. There's nothing worse than that and finding out that there were so many available. So, um, so you definitely want to make that work. Um, now, Mitzi, you put in there that you wanted to, uh, I'm going to actually just put my book link into the chat right now. It is bit.ly slash sell more faster. Um, book. Was this valuable? Did you learn something out of today? I hope you all enjoy. Yes, Gregory. Yes, this was super valuable. I am so glad to hear that. Um, this was actually a uh, super popular. I gave this one originally, funny enough, two, three years ago now. Three years ago in um, for HubSpot's annual event uh, inbound. Um, and so I was super excited about this one. Oh, well, you're welcome, Tracy. And I hope some of you will, um, some of you or even all of you will join us next week for our open free meetup role play where you can actually practice making some of your phone calls, practice trying to book your meetings. Um, for those of you, I see some of you like Tracy is a graduate and everything. I hope you'll be joining us this afternoon. We have our exclusive graduate only role play um, because it's not just about um, the phone calls, but we also focus about how do you create value in those meetings? How do we actually interact with our clients? How do we deliver proposals appropriately? And so uh, this gives everyone a lot of practice and an opportunity to get feedback from each other, right? Here's a proposal that I want to present to a client. Would I, would you mind letting me go through it and get, give me your feedback of what you look up for in that? Um, yeah, absolutely, Alyssa. I am so glad to hear that. Well, thank you all so very much. I promise I'd have you off by the top of the hour. This was an absolute pleasure. My heart goes out to each and every one of you. Uh, We're not doing a webinar in two weeks time um, only because I'm gonna be taking an extra day off. Uh, we will have some great video content available for you. And don't forget to follow us on all of social media. LinkedIn um, is our primary platform. Thank you. I know you had options today and I am so honored that you decided to spend this hour with us. Thank you.